In this lesson, we're going to learn how to assess left ventricular thrombus using CMR. If you're familiar with echocardiography, then you'll know that it's commonly used to assess patients for left ventricular thrombus, but with variable reliability. CMR offers high resolution imaging without many of the limitations of echo, such as suboptimal imaging windows. Late gardlinium enhancement CMR is particularly valuable as left ventricular thrombus is avascular. This means that the gardlinium contrast is absent and areas of thrombus appear very dark. This means that they stand out quite clearly against the adjacent myocardium, particularly when the adjacent myocardium is infarcted and therefore contains bright gardlinium enhancement. Late gardlinium enhancement CMR detects left ventricular thrombus in 7% of patients who have left ventricular systolic dysfunction. This is a cine CMR image showing a four chamber view. And this is from a 47 year old man with an ischemic cardiomyopathy. He has an overall left ventricular ejection fraction of 36% as a result of a significant area of myocardial infarction affecting the left ventricular apex. This is the left ventricle, and we can see that the apex is dyskinetic. It pushes outwards during systole. As a consequence of this area of akinesia, a large laminated thrombus has built up at the apex. And we can see this on the Cine CMR image. This is the same patient with an ischemic cardiomyopathy. This is a Cine CMR taken in the two chamber view. We have the left ventricle here, the mitral valve and the left atrium. And once again, we can see that the left ventricular apex has been affected by myocardial infarction. It's dyskinetic and there's this large laminated apical thrombus present at the apex. These are also images from the same patient. These are late gardlinium enhancement images. So these are taken 10 minutes after the administration of intravenous gardlinium contrast. Because a patient has had an apical infarct, there is late gardlinium enhancement present at the left ventricular apex. This is a four chamber view and the left ventricle is here and we can see the left ventricular apex contains subendocardial and towards the apex itself virtually full thickness late gardlinium enhancement. This is a two chamber view, uh, left ventricle and left atrium and again there is late gardlinium enhancement virtually full thickness throughout much of the apex. The thrombus can be seen much more clearly on these images than on the previous cine images uh, and that's because thrombus is avascular and that makes it dark. It doesn't take up any gardlinium contrast. And so on these two images, we can see this dark, irregular structure at the apex, surrounded by the infarcted myocardium, which is very bright because of the presence of late gardlinium enhancement. And so late gardlinium enhancement CMR is the most sensitive technique for helping to identify the presence of left ventricular thrombus. So let's take a look at a different patient. This is a 68 year old man who has also had a apical myocardial infarction causing a ischemic cardiomyopathy. His left ventricular ejection fraction is 37%. And we can see that the left ventricular apex is a little dyskinetic. It pushes out just a little during systole which clearly provides a substrate to develop a thrombus. But is there an apical thrombus present? Well, it's a little hard to say in this view. There's a little abnormality here, um, but it's hard to say for certain whether that represents a thrombus or not. So let's take a look at the late gardlinium enhancement image. And here it is. This is the same patient. This is their four chamber late gardlinium enhancement image. And looking at the apex, it's not really evident that there's any thrombus there. Um, but this case has been chosen to illustrate the importance of having a look at the left ventricle in multiple 
different views. So let's move on and have a look at this patient's two-chamber view. So here's the same patient. This is their two-chamber Cine CMR image. And here's the left ventricle, mitral valve and left atrium. And here's the left ventricular apex. And this time I'm much more suspicious. Looking at the apex, there's this area in the apex just sitting here, uh, which looks very suspicious of an apical thrombus. But to try and prove this, let's again take a look at the equivalent late guard lineum enhancement image. And here it is, this is the late guard lineum enhancement image, and now we can clearly see an area of myocardial infarction with late guard lineum enhancement at the apex, and sitting within that, in the uh, cavity of the left ventricle, is this dark avascular area, uh, which represents a left ventricular apical thrombus. So this wasn't at all clearly evident in the four-chamber view, even on the four-chamber late guard lineum enhancement view, but is clearly evident in the two-chamber view. So the lesson from this case is the importance of taking multiple views, four-chamber, three-chamber and two-chamber views of the left ventricle to look carefully for any evidence of thrombus. So in summary, how do we perform CMR for left ventricular thrombus? Well, we should always look carefully for left ventricular thrombus in patients with left ventricular systolic dysfunction, particularly in those with an ischemic cardiomyopathy, because these are the patients that run the highest risk of thrombus formation. We need to carefully inspect cine CMR images for anatomical evidence of thrombus, and we need to do so in multiple different views. But the best sensitivity is with late guard lineum enhancement CMR images. Thrombus is avascular, and so contrast uptake is absent. This means that thrombus appears very dark on a background of myocardial infarction, which appears very bright. If you'd like to read more about the use of CMR to detect left ventricular thrombus, take a look at this paper published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Now that you've seen some examples of left ventricular thrombus using CMR, let's put your skills to the test with some quiz questions. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.